Today I'm going to show you how to do a lesson for fifth grade and the lesson is called tessellations. The students are going to learn about tessellations and then they're going to make artwork of their own using a tessellation in the style of MC Escher. So the materials you need for this is this um, template here, tessellations. This is where they'll practice making their, um, their own tessellation. Uh, tape, pencil, colored pencil, um, markers. I just have Sharpies. Any color marker will work. They're going to make artwork like this and they're going to make their own template that they'll trace in order to make their tessellation. So there's this practice template right here. You can print this on cardstock and they can use this as their template and it's fine. Um, if you would like, they can practice on this and then make their actual template out of thin cardboard. This is just cereal box cardboard. It works really well. They're able to trace a little bit better without the paper moving around and getting pushed around by the pencil. So to start, I would have the students cut out these grids. And it sometimes takes a little bit of practice for them to kind of understand how it's going to work. So that's why I've given them a few chances to try it. So they're gonna start with one of these grids. It's just a two inch square. So if you decide to do the cereal box cardboard, it's just a two inch square. And these I cut uh, just using the paper cutter at the school office and it cuts really well. So they have this grid here and it's not difficult but there is a couple things that they need to remember and one of those is they're going to cut out from two sides and it doesn't matter um, they're going to do a top or a bottom or a left or a right and what I usually have them do is first pick which side they want to cut out of doesn't matter they can pick any direction they want so I'm going to choose this side um, and they just want to draw a simple shape, uh, nothing too complicated because they need to cut it out in one cut. And what I mean by that is they need to be able to start and finish in one cut. It can't be cut out into multiple pieces or it doesn't work. So I've just drawn this simple shape, cut it out. And all you're gonna do is take that shape you cut out and you're gonna move it over to exactly the same place on the side, on the other side. So that's where the grid is nice is because it allows you to line up that, um, that shape so that it is in the right spot. So that's why I do have them do it with the cardstock on the grid. So just have them tape it. So you just, simply slide it over and then use tape. Tape is definitely the way to go with this. It's the best way. Um, they may need to come back and trim off like there's little pieces of tape that are hanging over the paper and they can just trim those off. So they can do, they can do more than one shape on the side. Um, but again, everything has to be cut in a single cut. If, if that makes sense, because they have to move the piece over. If they cut this piece out, you know, with multiple cuts of the scissors, um, then they can't move it over into one piece. So then they're gonna pick another side, um, the top or the bottom. We're all done cutting um, the vertical edges and they're gonna do the same thing. They're just gonna pick a side, the top or the bottom, draw a shape, cut it out and slide it um, up or down, depending on which side they've cut out of. So I'm gonna cut out of this top side. And I'll show you how to do two, two shapes rather than one. So I've just done, drawn two simple shapes. I'm gonna cut those out. 
Each one has to be cut in one piece. And again, that's the trickiest part for them is understanding that it has to be cut in one piece. So now they take that shape and you're just gonna move it and again, line it up. So I think we had it this way, it doesn't matter which side. Um, and you're just gonna move it and line it back up. So it's lined back up with that grid. And just tape it down. And then cut out the other shape. They don't have to do two shapes. They can just do one, um, whatever they want. One thing that I don't have them do is I don't have them cut off the corners. When they cut off the corners, it gets a little bit trickier. So I try to have them cut just from the side. So here's my other piece. Line it up using the grid. And tape it down. and then trim the tape if needed. Sometimes they can just fold it, sometimes it does need to be trimmed. And they just need to cut the tape because they're gonna have to trace around this shape and the tape will prevent that. Okay, so I've got my shape that we're gonna use to make the tessellation. And once they've done it, they'll, they'll kind of get the idea and they really do think it's a cool concept. Um, so you can have them practice a couple times. Um, as they learn how it works, they might get a better idea of how they wanna make a shape. So that's why I've given you three. Um, Again, the cardstock is fine. You can trace around it just fine if they want and you think it's gonna be easier for them, you can use the little cardboard and have them make their final one. So they could just um, use their favorite one that they made and make a similar one. It is trickier without the grid. So that's why there are some advantages to both. The, the grid on the cardstock is easier to line everything up this one's easier to trace. So there's pros and cons to each. Experiment with it and decide how you think it will work best for your class. So now that they have have their shape, I'm just gonna use this one. Um, again, I would have them make, make a couple at least, just so they get the idea. So now I have my shape and I give them a half sheet of cardstock. A full sheet is overwhelming and gets a little bit tedious. So I really like the idea of the half sheet. You get a good idea of uh, the tiling that's created with the tessellation, but it doesn't get overwhelming. So I just have them start with their shape in the middle and they just wanna hold it down carefully and trace over the entire perimeter of their tessellation or of their shape. So I've traced it. So for some of the students, this is actually the trickiest part, the tracing. There's a few things you can do. You can give them a piece of tape and roll it up and put it on the back of their shape. And then it's a little bit easier for them to manipulate and move around and it stays in place. So that's an easy tip. Um, it peels off the paper fine. Um, so they've done the one shape and now they're gonna move it. So they're gonna find how this fits on all sides. So, and they can decide which direction they wanna go, but the idea is they're gonna fill up this entire paper with their shape as it 
nests nicely into itself. So just move it and keep tracing. Okay, so I've traced my shape and covered my whole paper. I encourage them when they're done to check their edges. And what I mean by this is make sure that you really did trace it as much as you can. Sometimes there's like a little piece, like for example, right here that they miss um, that is part of the shape. So just kind of check that all your edges. One thing that you'll find with some of the students is because they're not super careful tracing, they're... Um, shapes kind of start to get wonky and maybe get too wide as they go. It's okay. Just tell them to do it the best they can. Keep fitting that shape in. Um, but if they're not real precise, um, some it'll it just won't fit quite as well. So just remind them to be real precise and to be careful. Um, and then they'll get something like this. So now what I like to have them do is to use a marker. It doesn't have to be a Sharpie. It can be any marker, any marker works fine. And to now trace all these lines that they've uh, just created by tracing their shape. I like to go through now and just erase any of those kind of pencil lines that are left over from maybe not tracing it correctly or just from mistakes when you were originally tracing. So now you have this. Um, and this is where I think the students, they're really good at this, is they are good at now deciding what their shape looks like. Um, so I decided this one looks like a fish. Um, I'm not sure what this one looks like yet. Um, but they can decide to keep it and not really have it be a shape at all. It can just it doesn't have to look like anything. They can just color it. Or they can add some more details and make it look like an animal or a person or whatever they want it to look like. Um, you just wanna remind them that the shape should be identical uh, because this that's the type of tessellation they made. One thing that I really enjoy about this one is the students really get an appreciation for MC Escher and how detailed his tessellations were and how complicated. And they really get an appreciation for how difficult uh, that is for him to have done. So now I like to use colored pencils on this one. They just look really nicely and they give it a similar look to MC Escher's. A lot of his tessellations are using uh, watercolor or colored pencils. So it gives it a really similar look. And now they just want to color their uh, shapes that they've made so that you can see that the shape is repeating. And they can do it different colors. They can just use a couple colors, whatever they want. And then again, if they decide they want to add some detail to make it look like something, an animal or a particular person or shape, then they can do that as well in this step. Okay, so I've completely filled in my tessellation now. Um, again, the students can add some more detail to each shape if they want. Um, I encourage them to think real simple since they have to do it multiple times for each shape. Or they can just leave it. If they just like how it looks, kind of like puzzle pieces put together, then they can just leave it and that's just fine. 